Hello guys and gals. Buffalo here. Got the defense targets, RST target, set up down there at 100 yards. Well, it's actually set up where it's always set up, but I'm back a little farther than normal. See, I, I just have a pistol range set up here, but every now and then I'll come back out of it when I've got a rifle to show and, and shoot just a little bit, but this was never intended to be a rifle range, so that's why I don't, don't do a whole lot of rifle reviews. Uh, I've got a rifle with me today. I'd like to show you guys. This is a SIG 5.56. Not going to shoot it a whole lot. We're going to put a few rounds on that target. Just got some 5.56 ball ammo here. Now, 100 yards with a rifle like this is no, uh, you know, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. So take that for what it's worth. Put a few rounds on it. <laughs> Very fun to shoot. Let's take it over to the table, give you guys a look at it. All right guys, here we are over here at the table. I had to move the table back in here in the corner into some shade. It was so bright out there, the uh, camera wouldn't hardly, it just blowed out everything. So. Uh, I want to start off by saying that this is not a review per se of this rifle. I have, I've only shot about 60 rounds through this thing. A friend of mine picked it up and, and sent it over right away, still new in the box. And, uh, you know, I want to thank him for that. He wanted me to take a look at it and get it on video and let you guys take a look at it. So definitely not a longevity or endurance type of review here. I'd never handled one of these rifles till last week when I picked this one up. So... Take, uh, take that for what it is. We'll just kind of call it a first impressions video or something like that. But it's a Sig Sauer 556 or 556. It's chambered in 556. Kind of a hybrid. Uh, most people call it a hybrid between an AK and an AR. Kind of got an AR style lower in some ways. And, uh, and piston driven like an AK. Bolt kind of reminds me of an AK. We'll do a take down here in just a minute. Of course, got an A2 flash hider, uh, side charging bolt handle. Safety is uh, can be worked from either side, but it is in a little bit of an awkward location. It's not terrible. You do kind of have to release your grip, or I do, in order to operate the safety. And in the south paw position, the hinge of this folding sock it does have a does have a folding stock. But the hinge of this folding stock is kind of in the way. So you really have to loosen your grip to get to it from the left-handed position. From what I've read, most southpaws end up using it on the left side anyway. So just the way that is. The mag release can be easily operated from either side. And does have a bolt release over here in the standard position, kind of like an AR. But uh, breaks down like an AR. Got the pins on the lower. Break it open just like an AR. Shoots really good. Um, like I say, I've only shot, I shot three boxes, three 20 round boxes through it. So I've only shot 60 rounds through it so far. Uh, shoots really good. Really impressed with it, with the way it handles. The, the ejection of the spent cases just amazes me. This thing really flings them. I'll try to, like I said, I'll try to demonstrate that here in just a minute too. Got the rotary diopter sights on it. Unusual sight set up. I'd never used those before, but uh, kind of like them. You know, they work like they're supposed to, so no real complaints with them. Don't know, uh, I've heard they don't co-witness with, uh, with AR style optics. So don't know, don't know about that. Somebody else will probably chime in and let us know about that. Any of you guys that have owned one of these for a while or whatever, feel free to light up the comments section. Does have a 
setting here on the end where you can, if you get, if you run this thing dirty or in a dirty environment and you start getting failures to eject or whatever, you can open up the gas port a little bit with this switch up here and it'll let more gas come back through and uh, they say it'll operate even in dirty conditions like that. Of course, you know, you want to clean it as soon as you possibly could, but kind of a temporary way to get by if you have to. Pretty neat to have that on there. Got a integral sling, uh, sling studs there on the side. Uh, there's the button for the folding stop. If I fold this the right way. And it clicks in over here on this side. So it's not gonna it's not gonna fall loose. You actually have to yank at it pretty good to get it to open up. But we'll do a quick take down here. Pretty simple. Well first you'll uh there's a lever here on the bolt. You'll push that down and pull your bolt handle out. Push at least your rear pin. You can take both pins out if you want to. At least your rear pin out. Now you've got it broke down like an AR. Here's your bolt. Pretty simple. You can see, you, I don't know, you probably can't see from there. You can see the piston come through right here. Actually, push that pin back in just for a second. We can take this end cap off. pull that piston and piston rod out and there's your there's your recoil spring that's why it's kind of kind of front heavy all this stuff up front now that that bolt handle just kind of acts as a keyway or as a key not as a keyway between the uh, piston so you gotta make sure you get it lined back up right and the bolt remember how to do this here This end switch back on just like that. Open this back up, slide the bolt in. I can see how to do it here. Guys, I've only had this thing apart, it's even marked up, so they've kind of buffalo proofed it there. I've only had this thing apart a couple of times. I took it out when I first brought it home. I, I wiped out the uh, packing grease and stuff before I shot it. And that's the only, really only other time I've had it apart. So not too bad to take apart and put back together. Pretty easy to clean, get to everything. But just wanted to show you guys this thing. I thought it was a pretty neat rifle. It is a commemorative rifle to the 160th Soar. Um, if you guys don't know who those, if you don't know who those guys are, look them up they you know they do a lot for us here in the united states so check those guys out they've been involved in so many missions and things it's it's kind of unreal but they're from out of fort campbell over there so shout out to those guys uh it doesn't really change the rifle anything like that it's just a uh they've kind of etched that on there just as a commemorative edition but that's really all i've got to say about the rifle because i haven't had that much experience with it and I've got to give it back to the guy tomorrow. So probably won't never have one of these back out here again. So I wanted to take this moment and share it with you guys, but we will shoot it again here in just a second. We'll go ahead and do that. And I'll show you guys how, uh, how powerful that ejection is on this thing. So I'm back out here at hundred yards again. It does take AR-15 magazines, which is handy. You know, these things are a dime a dozen and they're everywhere, available everywhere. So, or, pretty much everywhere uh, it's, it's a civilian version of the Swiss 550 you know very very popular rifle with a legendary reputation the trigger on this thing is different than any AR-15 trigger that you'll ever shoot I'm not saying that in a bad way it's just different I actually I actually kind of like it uh, don't really know how to, to describe the way the trigger pulls but I actually kind of like it a little bit, but I'm going to shoot a little bit. I'm going to pull off 10 rounds here, just basically into the backstop. I'm going to aim at that steel target, but basically I'm just going to shoot into the backstop. And from this GoPro angle, you can see how little that that muzzle actually floats around. 
and then we'll fire 10 shots again and I'll let you take a look. We'll focus on the, uh, the way this thing spits out the casings. So it's 10 rounds here. So as you can see, very little. I can watch that front sight float around inside that uh, aperture without it ever having to worry about it getting out of hand on me. So very easy to control if you like a heavy rifle. If you don't like a heavy rifle, this is, a, <laughs> this is not going to be the rifle for you. Now I'm going to try, see if I can turn this camera just a little bit. Look how far this thing ejects those spent cases. Just, uh, and that's something I kind of look for in a rifle like this. It, it just kicks them way out there. So, put this thing on safe. One, three, four, five, six, seven, around 21 to 25 feet or so. Really kicks them out, but I wish I had a ton of information on this rifle for you, or this carbine. I don't, but I'm not going to sit here and BS you and pretend like I do. You guys that do know a lot about them, teach me something. Let me know something in the comments section. This is Buffalo, and I'll talk with y'all again soon.